Good morning, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 28th, 2022, going on 1040 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple tropical cyclone threats in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days. we got a storm letter out there, so what do you need to know? Let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that a couple of things are starting to pique our interest now. First of all, in the Caribbean, we do have this mute tropical wave bringing some shower and thunderstorm activity to portions of Jamaica. This will be moving generally towards the northwest over the next several days and could find itself in at least a little bit more favorable environmental conditions as it approaches the northwest Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. But really, development chances have begun to taper off with that. We have Invest Area 92L out here in the subtropics, Invest Area 91L out here in the central Atlantic, and a potential system moving off the coast of Africa if we look here. At the tropical weather outlook here graphically, we notice that again, here are our four systems on the board. Most notably, and what's going to be the primary focus to, in today's video will be this system here, Invest Area 91L moving towards the northwest and could get pretty close to the northern part of the Leeward Islands sometime by next week. And then we could be dealing with a system out here, although development chances are not likely at this point and another system coming off the coast of Africa, which could develop within the next five to seven days. If we take a look here at Invest Area 91L this morning, we noticed that there is an area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity today. We noticed that there's really two clusters of thunderstorms, one to the north here, and then one on the southern uh, wave envelope here. Now this actually has garnered a lot of attention because it is at least the most dominant for now and has maintained a pretty healthy convective signature for a while and we are starting to notice that there is at least a little bit more inflow into this area which does signify that this could become the dominant area but if we actually take a look under the hood here and look at the scatterometer pass from this morning we notice that again there is an area of disorganized uh, shower and thunderstorms and with associated on the southwestern cluster here there is actually a kind of elongated area of low pressure I wouldn't necessarily call this a closed circulation based on this scatterometer pass, but there is certainly a circulation there. Now, it could be closed, but again, you know, either way, this is very elongated at this point. And there is some 25 to 30 knot winds here on the northern side here. So this is producing at least some gusty winds and some heavy rainfall, of course, over the open waters. Uh, but either way, it is interesting that this actually does show that this is uh, trying to become the dominant uh, part of the, the wave envelope here, which will be something interesting and could have some implications over the next several days. If we take a look here real quick at 92L, again, the circulation, we notice that it is very small, but it is a, a, a compact closed circulation today. And we notice that there's really only one thunderstorm tower, and that's because there's a lot of dry air and a lot of shear around here. Uh, so this system really is not going to amount to much, but maybe could be a brief tropical system you know if it you know tries to fire uh, convection over the diurnal maximum this evening we'll see how that plays out now looking at the overall synopsis here for invest 91l today we'll look at the upper level wind environment to begin with now today this is the 60 runoff the hurricane specific model the h wharf it's the forecast for 8 a.m this morning and we noticed that what we're looking at here is an overall area of shear, if we actually look here, we notice this tropical upper trosopheric trough right here cutting across portions of the subtropical Atlantic here. And this is actually inducing a little bit of vertical shear and will be inducing shear for the next several days. If we actually look here at the H wharf, we notice how this uh, tut actually begins to slide eastward with time. And that eastward transition here in the uh, forecast does show that there is increasing shear. And with this increasing shear, we notice that if we look at the relative humidity, we notice that it's not overly that great. There's a lot of dry air that actually gets pumped around uh, this upper level low here and actually tries to get entrained into the circulation. So whatever's down here uh, by Tuesday is going to be rather convectively anemic, it seems like. There probably will be some convection, but probably not much. It's going to have to be a little bit further south and west if it actually wants to have a fighting chance at least over the next couple of days. And we notice though, if we jump back to the, the shear forecast here, we notice that over the next several days though, this forecast does begin to change around for the better. If you look by Thursday of next week, we actually have that tut being almost completely washed out here. 
and uh, we actually noticed that we more so transitioned to this uh, pretty good anticyclonic outflow pattern here. And this actually allows for more breathing room, more convection, more divergence aloft and convergence at the surface. And that's actually reflected here in the relative humidity field. This begins to start to take off here. We notice that there's more bundling of the moisture up here on the northern side. And by the end of the forecast period, this low begins to migrate underneath this pocket of convection. And we start to see the signs here of tropical cyclone genesis at this point to the northeast of the Leeward Islands. Now, the forecast track here is going to be a bit difficult. If we look at the GFS here and we actually look at the 500 millibar height anomalies, uh, we notice that what's going to be happening over the next several days is we have this big trough that is going to be over the portions of the northeast U.S. This trough is actually eroding and is going to be replaced with a big ridge of high pressure. But the problem is here that ridge uh, does start to kind of break down after some time. Now we'll have to see how this actually plays out here. But overall, this is definitely a signal that we could be dealing with a storm that tries to approach um, more so towards the west here. I'm not necessarily saying that land is going to be impacted down here downstream in the U.S. or the Bahamas, but certainly this is a pattern that does begin to favor some potential land interaction here. So this is certainly um, going to be something that needs to be monitored very closely as we progress through the next several days. And on the European ensembles, that uh, is kind of the similar trend as well. We have a pretty strong ridge of high pressure out here. And so there's not really much of a pathway that allows this to escape comfortably out to sea at this point. But we'll see if that begins to change. We still have a lot of time to monitor this at this point. If we look at the European ensembles and we look at the, uh, the um, ensemble mean sea level pressure at this time, we'll kind of zoom in here to the western uh, part of the Atlantic Basin. We notice that overall we have a pretty good clustering of thunderstorm or a pretty good clustering rather of ensembles here suggesting that we could comfortably have a storm towards the north of the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico at this time. So that is certainly some good news and subsequently down here in the Caribbean, not really much model support except for out here in the East Pacific Basin. So there doesn't really seem to be much out here in the Caribbean and that certainly goes to suggest that whatever the GFS is picking up on is probably not really going to happen at that particular point in time. But we still have several days to monitor this, but again, if you are in the Leeward Islands, it is certainly a good idea just to have your hurricane preparedness plans ready to go, but certainly not anything significant at this time. And of course, if you live downstream here in the Turks and Caicos in Florida, uh, you know, in the Southeast U.S., certainly nothing to worry about at this time, but it is certainly worth monitoring because uh, there is some trends that could suggest that this could get a little bit uh, too close for comfort here. So we'll just have to continue to monitor that. Of course, the threat areas for this year, as we were talking about many months ago, this still goes perfectly in line with our threat areas. That very high to high risk across portions of the Caribbean and Leeward Islands. And of course, in the western and northwestern parts of the Caribbean, the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and Florida, that high to very high risk as well for tropical cyclone impacts. Uh, this year. So that lines up pretty nicely with what we're seeing, honestly, at this point. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.